Guys, I am so happy to bring you my review for Green Lantern Emerald Dawn. This is a book that I was not expecting to review, but read recently. And I was like, hey, I'm going back to my DC reviews, so why not review Green Lantern? And I just want to do something just to see how it goes. I just want to turn myself green right now. Hopefully that worked. <laughs> if it did work... The rest of the video is going to be like this. I'm going to be green like a Green Lantern. Yeah, no, you're not. I'm going to change it back. I think it's obvious to say that I'm a Green Lantern fan. I love Green Lantern. If I were to, if I were to narrow it down... Oh, I can't narrow it down. I don't know. My, my, I guess if I were to have any favourite Justice League members, it would be Green Lantern, Flash, Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. They're just my favourites. Anyway, enough uh, dawdling around. Let's get into my review for Emerald Dawn. So the first thing that I loved with this book is how the story, the narrative is laid out. It doesn't do any jumping around to different locations or other characters to set up things for, le for things later on in the story. It just keeps us in the pocket of Hal's story. It focuses on him and only him as he's introduced to like the Guardians, thrown into a fight with the villain Legion. I thought the way it was written was a very clever way of taking us on this journey with him. We don't cut away from Hal. What I will say that's on a bit of the negative side is that I didn't know if we really had to see his father die at the beginning of the story. I don't know if we had to see that because it doesn't really have anything to do with the story. It doesn't... I mean, it it briefly gets mentioned like once, I'm pretty sure. It, it's not a pivotal part of the story, and it doesn't really affect his choices later on in the story. So I honestly think that watching Hal's father die has become like watching Bruce's parents get shot, or jumping over to Marvel and watching uh, Uncle Ben get killed. I, I honestly think watching Hal's father die in a plane accident has kind of become one of those so widely known things amongst readers at least that you don't necessarily need to have it in your story but you can still have it be a part an important part of Hal's history. It can help us get invested in the character of Hal a bit more but as far as I'm concerned there were uh, there are other things going on in the story that invested me into the character of Hal. Things that are far more pressing to him, things that actually affect him during the story. One of them being the fact that he got into a car accident injuring himself and three others who were in the car um, which caused the rifts between him and those friends of his. All of this because there was a sign that was too close to the road. And I must say I don't know... Okay this, this is going to get really nitpicky here but there's a point in the story where Hal says you know it was a sign. It wasn't my fault it was a sign. So he's clearly blaming some uh, exterior object rather than recognizing that it was his fault. This is all this all has to do with his character arc which I think overall is well written. It's just this one bit in the story where he fixates on this sign so much that he flies down and crashes into the damn thing. I think it was maybe just a bit too heavy-handed in showing us that he's a bit of a screw-up. So I get that he's a screw-up I just think that maybe him fixating on the sign was maybe a step too far. Other than that though, his character arc and he, he, how he changes and evolves as a character, I thought was well done. Here's something I didn't know about Green Lantern, because just so you guys know, all I've seen of Green Lantern up until this point was uh, the Ryan Reynolds movie, which was not the best um, thing to get introduced to Green Lantern. Um, <laughs> But I've also seen him as a side character in animated films and shows. So he, I've never actually experienced Hal Jordan Green Lantern or really any other Green Lantern in their own material. This is the first time, besides the movie, this is the first time that I'm getting exposed to what Green Lantern is meant to be. So with all that said, I didn't know that the ring can speak. I thought this, most comic book readers would know this, right? But I, uh, I loved it. It was such a, I thought, necessary element of humour to combine with the character of, of Hal Jordan. I'll actually give an example. Just to give you guys a bit of a backstory behind this example, Hal was asking him, why didn't you tell me that you could talk? And the ring's response was, no inquiry was made. And then when he actually asks it a direct question, its only response is, is this an inquiry? And I thought the humor behind the ring being able to talk and, and not really knowing how to interact with people was a 
lent itself to being like the C-3PO to Hal Jordan's Luke Skywalker. Come to think of it, there are uh, other things that I didn't know Green Lantern could do, um, which I didn't write in my, my notes, but I will mention, there are a couple times in the book where he phases through a, like, object, like, solid objects like he visits one of his friends in the hospital and just when he needs to leave he flies through the window without breaking it phases through it is that a thing like can green lantern can the green lanterns actually do that i'm not sure because i haven't seen it in in any show or movie it only in this book as soon as this is the source ma the source material i have to come to the conclusion that maybe they just haven't put it in yet i don't know why haven't they used that? Or was that retconned in later comics? I have no idea. Anyway, um, I can't talk about Emerald Dawn without at least going into Legion. It's called Legion. No, not that Legion. But I guess this villain was very much like a Terminator um, because of how it unrelentingly hunts Hal Jordan across space and time, plowing through anyone and anything that gets in its way. And there's a point in the story where how loses someone pretty close to him that it shocked me. I did not expect them to go down that route. I did not expect them to do that. Um, and this I would use as a better example of the writers and the story showing us how much of a screw up he is. This is the shit that I really related to. A lot of what the writers did with Hal Jordan in this book um, made me relate to this character and I was shocked that they, they, that they did that with one of his friends and I was like, whoa, this book just took it to a whole new level. Another thing that also took it to a, another level is that the villain Legion is not your stereotypical villain that just wants to destroy things or take over the world, which is what I was expecting it to be given the age of the book. Not to <laughs> judge a book by its cover, but I, I thought because it was an older storyline they wouldn't be willing to do certain things, but they did. We related to to, I actually got to relate to the villain, Legion. So I was wrong by judging a book by its cover. That's a good lesson to learn. In summary, I would say that even though there's a couple things that I could have done without, everything else couldn't be any clearer to me as this is about a man who, a screw up of a man, who finds a way to grow and improve and accept his mistakes and face them. From the right into the artwork, I would say that the creative team has done an almost perfect job of illustrating who Hal Jordan is and if you haven't gotten into Green Lantern already, I would say don't read Secret Origin first, read Emerald Dawn. This is actually Emerald Dawn 1 and 2. Speaking of Emerald Dawn 2, I haven't written any notes down for this, but I just wanted to quickly give you my thoughts on that book. Emerald Dawn 2 I liked, but not as much as the first because the first was a coming of age story where the second one delved more into the Green Lantern core and Hal's relationship with Sinestro. This was by far one of my favorite things con concerning Emerald Dawn 2, the miniseries. Another aspect of the story that I really liked, loved actually, is Guy Gardner. Now, I only know about Guy Gardner from the shows and movies, right? That's all, that's the only thing I know about Guy Gardner. I know barely anything. From this one miniseries, I got, I got a peek behind the curtain of who Guy Gardner actually is. And just from this miniseries, he doesn't remind me at all from what I've seen in media so far. And I actually don't want to say anything about it because it, it, it genuinely shocked me. And if, you're, and if you haven't read that much Guy Gardner or really any Green Lantern at all, and you go into this, I want you to experience Guy Gardner for the first time and everything else mostly for the first time. If I were to have any problems with it, um, I guess I would say that the stuff going on in space was much more interesting to me. And even though Guy Gardner is on Earth and I would loved seeing him whenever he would pop into a, uh, a panel, whenever it would cut back to Earth, I was just not that interested in it. Really, I would say is that wherever Hal is, is where I'm the most interested. So if he's up in space and not on Earth, I'd rather not cut back to Earth. And if he's on Earth, I'd rather not cut back to space. See, this is kind of tying into what I was saying with the first miniseries when I reviewed that like five minutes ago. The story is far more compelling and interesting when Hal, when it focuses on Hal. If it does too much jumping around to different locations and other characters, I'm just not as interested. Anyway, I guess that's my review for Emerald Dawn 2, as brief as it was, and my review for Emerald Dawn 1. So that is my review for, I guess, Hal Jordan Volume 1. So... Uh, I will see you in my next DC review, wh whatever that'll be.